Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's episode, we are going to talk about problems that you may encounter with the Lexus ISF. We are going to be doing this video on a couple failure points that affect the Lexus ISF. And I've compiled this list um, either through personal firsthand experience or through friends that have had uh, these issues come up on their car, as well as just reading on Publexis or some of the Facebook groups of what people have been experiencing. So let's start it off with the first item. You may in, uh, encounter what is called the valley plate leak or the pink ooze coming out of the top part of your engine. And you're gonna notice this is happening if your coolant is getting low or you, you seem to be losing coolant all the time. Um, you know, there are some times when you might just, you know, periodically need to refill the coolant, but if you see it getting lower and lower all the time and having to refill it, then you could possibly have a valley plate leak. Um, could be a radiator leak, could be a water pump leak, but the valley plate leak has affected enough Lexus ISFs that um, it's, it's a, uh, it's a part that you may want to look into. And the tall, telltale sign that you have the valley plate leak is you, you can uh, put your car up uh, on, on a lift or whatever, go underneath it, and if you see like this kind of pink ooze on this picture that I'll show you here um, coming from the back of your engine, it's probably splattered all over your headers, on your transmission, on just like the underside of your car, then you definitely have the valley plate leak. That's where it's leaking from, or um, if you open up uh, your, you know, your engine and take out the top part, then you're going to see in these pictures that I'll show you the valley plate with the pink ooze everywhere. And it's not a very expensive, um, expensive fix to your car, but it is time consuming. A lot of people do take it to the dealership to get it done. And I've seen people pay from anywhere from $800 to $1,800 to get this fixed. So and it's basically all labor. Um, it, apparently the sealant goes bad that was used and uh, they have to redo that, put new sealant in and clean it up and uh, you should be good to go. Now I do have, I will be linking below a how-to that I uh, found somebody on uh, Club Lexus posted it up and they kind of did a step-by-step -step, uh, including pictures and you know it's very helpful if you are that handy and are able to do it. So um, I will include that down on the bottom here. But uh, that is definitely uh, a, a problem that a lot of Lexuses or ISFs have encountered. Um, you see, the, you know, going, going, going Club Lexus, you see the post, it, people talk about it all the time. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened to me. I don't see any of the pink ooze or anything like that. I'm gonna hope and pray that I don't have to experience that because that can be a very hefty bill to take care of. Next up, we have the crack tetters. Um, this is kind of intermittent. I've seen enough people that I wanted to include that on this list that the stock, uh, you know, very restrictive headers on the Lexus ISF, they crack. They kind of separate and, um, you know, I'll add these pictures in here so you kind of see what it looks like. And um, you're going to, I guess the, the, the sign that this is happening is you're going to hear this ticking sound. When you first start the car, when it's cold, you'll hear this ticking sound and then eventually it'll go away once the metal has expanded and kind of like, you know, semi-sealed itself if you will and uh, so if you hear that ticking sound it's not gonna be the fuel injectors or anything like that uh, fuel pump um, it is going to be a ticking sound that eventually goes away down there you could have cracked headers and the remedy for this you can do do, do two things um, you can either you know lift your car up you know take those headers out and i've seen some people re-weld those uh the, the, that those two pieces together if they wanted to keep the stock manifold you can do that but the um, what, what I see more, more more people doing is just putting the aftermarket headers on. Um, you know, the headers are the most restrictive part of the exhaust on our cars, and uh, people just use it as an opportunity to uh, upgrade. So you can either do PPE, um, Siki headers, or Novell headers. That those are the, the three big ones for our car, and um, and put those on. So you have either of those options, whatever you want to do. But it is like you know a six to eight hour job to get those headers in and out. So if you're going to do it, you might as well you know you, you may just want to take the opportunity to upgrade your headers if your stock exhaust manifolds are cracked. Next up is the melting dash on some of our cars. Now uh, you know for so many years it seems like every, you know people were complaining about their dashes melting. They're just getting sticky. They're um, you know just falling apart, look like crap. They touch it, and it just kind of you know the fingerprints are in the dash now. Well, Toyota finally, I think it was a 
mid to late last year, they kind of acknowledged it and gave everybody an extended uh, warranty on their dash. Everybody kind of you know loved that because you know so many people had been breaking their cars into Lexus and saying, "Hey, look at my dash. This is not right. You know, you need to fix this." And they weren't kind of honoring it. Depending on the dealers you went to, some fixed it, some did not. But now because of this extended service or extended warranty. Uh, more people are getting their da uh, melting dashes fixed. So what you do is you go into the dealership and the dealership kind of takes a look at your dash and says, yes, it's uh, it's bad, it needs to be replaced. And it's your dash and your sides, um, or no, it's not, it doesn't need to be, re be replaced. My car, it does not be need to be replaced. I have no signs of melting dash. I think my dash looks just as good as, you know, like the day that it came out. But I do, I you know, I do keep my car garaged. Um, I don't let it sit in the sun for long periods of time. You know, this is, this is definitely a heat affecting thing, uh, especially the cars, you know, that sit out in 100, 110, 120 degree heat. Of course, things are going to, you know, melt uh, more, more likely than cars that are, you know, in the shade and whatnot. So there is a fix for that. I would say take your car to the lo lo your local Lexus dealer and try and get that uh, fixed if you're able to. I believe that is that extended warranty is for another year or two. Um, I can't remember the date exactly, but it is, um, you know, for next year or two. So definitely go there as soon as you can if your dash is going bad. Um, and, you know, it might be a couple weeks, couple months, whenever they get those dashes in or if they're in stock and they will fix those and replace them with all new ones. So make your car looking good again uh, on the inside. Very good. Next up is the screen digitizer. Now, I have not been affected by this because as you all may know, my car does not have a navigation system in it. Um, I have kind of like the, uh, the, base, the basic uh, infotainment system. But anyway, um, the screen digitizer, digitizer stops working and most people get this because, you know, they're trying to press something on their screen, whether it be the AC, navigation, and the screen is not working. And so they have to get a new digitizer is more than likely the solution. And you can get these on eBay. Um, they are a little bit cheaper to get those. And then um, I will link down below some kind of how to's on how to uh, change that out. But that seems to be a problem that's affecting it. I've seen it a few times, so I wanted to include it on this list. Next up is the subwoofer. Um, I hear it more with the Mark Levinson system and People are saying that the subwoofer is blown, sounds like crap. Um, so there are a couple how to's that I will link below on people that, on how they fixed it. Some people have kind of re-glued the uh, subwoofer back together. It seems like it was falling apart. Other people have changed it out. I think there's a MB quart subwoofer that a lot of people have changed it out to, which sounds uh, pretty good from what, I, from what I'm reading. And, um, it's, uh, it's not too hard from what I see on the how-tos. You kind of got to take your back seats apart, get under there, you know, redo some wiring and whatnot. But it um, doesn't look like it's too bad of a, uh, of an, uh, of a fix. Uh, me personally, I don't have the Mark Levinson system on my car and my subs, uh, or my sub. It sounds, um, sounds good for, you know, the music that I play. It doesn't seem like it's blown, but, you know, I like hearing the, the, the exhaust, um, you know, the V8 noise most of the time anyway. So I really don't have too much music playing too often, or if it is, it's pretty low. So, um, I haven't, you know, pumped up, uh, some, uh, little John or, um, any music that's really going to hit the bass and maybe, uh, make that, make that sub blow. Um, next up here is we have the water pump. Now that, uh, you know, I kind of, that's a Toyota thing. It seems like water pumps are always going out on uh, Toyota. I've seen it enough times um, that, you know, people's water pumps have gone out, especially on the earlier year models, uh, the 08s, 09s, that could just be just due to age. And obviously the, the mileage is gonna be higher on those vehicles. But um, I wanted to add that to this list. I will also include a how-to and a link to a video from another um, Lexus ISF YouTuber who changed that out along with his radiator. He did a pretty good job on that video showing how to change that out. So definitely look at that. You might have some leaks with that pink ooze um, kind of coming out from there, or um, uh, you know, if you want to look at that as a possible um, piece that will go bad on these cars. And then the final uh, piece on this car that you know I see problems with, and this one I personally experienced is the inner tire wear issues. If you go on Club Lexus or Facebook groups, you'll see enough people that are you know talking about the inner tire wears. Inner tire the the rubber just wears more than the outside of the tire. And 
I don't know if this is you know built by design, but a lot of, everybody complains about it on Lexus ISS. This is not just ISS. This is the 250, 350s, whatever. And um, a possible solution, I don't know. You know, I think it helps, but it doesn't fix it. Is getting the um, uh, lower control arms, the RR Racing USRS or the Figs uh, lower control arm bushing. Uh, it definitely helps it a little bit, but um, you know, people said that that it, that has helped. Me personally, here's a picture of my um, tire after, you know, it kind of corded on a track day, but um, you know, this is just normal. I think this is the fifth track day on these tires as well as 10,000 miles or so on the road. So I get pretty good usage out of them. You can obviously the inner tire wear, I do get, I do get an alignment after I do uh, put on new tires, but with the Lexus, you can't, you can't um, ch change the, the camber on, on these cars with the stock suspension. You, uh, the um, the lower control arm bushings will help bring it in a little bit, but until you get a full like you know coil over and um, camber setup, you are not going to be able to change that. So as a stock car, you just kind of got to live with it. Um, to me, it's not too bad. I mean, the the, car, the 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 tires are pretty much worn out anyway. It's you know uh, you know I I don't think that I would have gotten too much more wear out of them, but that is another issue that people do uh, run into. Some people that don't track the car have said that the uh, lower control arms have helped a little bit more, but I think just the way I drive this car, it's gonna, I'm gonna uh, wear tires prematurely anyways. So thank you for watching that episode and I hope you learned something from this today. If you'd like this, please give it a like and subscribe. I'm gonna be bringing more content to the channel on the Lexus ISF. So thanks again for watching and we'll talk to you on the next one.